Hey, how you doing, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of God Concept. Yeah, I'm back. I enjoyed my um my anniversary date week. Took a little hiatus from doing the podcast thing. My energy was in other places. My energy was elsewhere. Freedom really comes you open your mind. I got excited news. Got my book coming out, Nature's Feature. Coming out August 27th. It's already available for pre-order on Amazon Kindle. Please check this book out. It's a great title. I did something different with this book and it's working. It's already working. Um, I didn't put a, a table of content in it, an index, if you will, to tell you, you know, each chapter. Because I want people to actually engage with books. You know, what I notice a lot of times, a lot of people like... Uh, Book snobs, or, or even people, you got this dynamic, right? You got the people that are ignorant to literature, right? They don't really, what I mean by that is they don't really pick up literature and read, you know what I mean? They rather, you know, hear or see, you know, that's okay. An audio book is good, audio book is fine, you know what I mean? But you got some people that'll just look at the table of content or whatever, and they'll decide based on what the chapter's names are that they don't want to read the book. And then you got, you know, this other, you know, dynamic where they, they look at it and they'll read the chapter and then they'll feel like they already know what the chapter's about. They already built up their own understanding of that, of, of whatever the chapter is. They already built up their understanding. They don't want to, they don't want to let you ruin their understanding of what, you know, what they believe to be true, their perception of reality, right? So they won't, they won't read it, but they'll come up with their own hypothesis or synopsis or you know what what the chapter means to them without actually diving into it and getting your opinion on this topic or whatever the matter is that the chapter contains right so that's why i didn't put a table of contents or an index there because i want people to be i want you to actually flip through and say mm, this is looking like all right let me read about this let me look up you know what i mean let me look into this and see what he thinks about this or you know what i mean see you know, what's there? Because we all have an opinion. We all have a theory in some form, shape, or fashion. You know what I mean? Even an opinion. You know, opinions are like assholes, and everybody has one. We can't be ignorant to that. You know, I found myself, you know, in a state where I was judging a lot of things. Like, um... Things that I might not understand because I'm not a part of whatever I might not understand. So even me, I have to take a step back from my own understanding and observe that, right? And not be judgmental. That's my thing. You know, for me to be here and to be a, a true observer, to be, you know... To be an observer is to be like a sponge, right? You have to absorb. You got to absorb this knowledge, right? You got to absorb so many things. But how could you truly absorb the knowledge of a thing if you're not purely observing a thing? If you're judging it, you're not observing. You're not really understanding. You're not trying to get any type of understanding. You're merely judging from a, you know, maybe you get the big picture. Maybe you're outside and you really don't understand it all. Maybe you're just judging a book by its cover, you know. But the thing is, being a judge and jury over somebody, that's why even when you go to court, you know, you're being judged by a jury of your peers. Because even a judge don't want to be responsible for judging anybody. He just appointed a judge. But when it comes to the actual ruling, what happens? Twelve people go in a room and they vote to see if you're guilty or not, right? I mean, if it's a if if you if you if you go to trial, right? If whatever case you got go to trial, right? So the judge really don't want to be a judge over you. He's merely observing, 
he's proceeding. He's presiding. Right? Because no man is supposed to be the judge and jury over you. You know, there's a concept to everything. So for me to, to look outwardly and not want to be judged, I have to look outwardly and also not judge as well. You know, at times, I don't even want to be observed. But I do understand that we're all observed at all times. At all times, even when no one's around, you're being observed by a higher consciousness. So therefore, you know, once you got a, a, a deep understanding of this, once you... Once you understand that, you'll really just look at life in a different way. You know, I give what I got. What knowledge I have, I give. And I give um, unwittingly. Un unwittingly or unwillingly. I'm sorry. I got a little bit of a speech impediment. But I give knowledge because I accumulate knowledge through living life. And not judging just merely observing because that's when you can really appreciate the true essence of a thing. You know, we all do our thing. We all, you know, have our merchandise or we all do our job or whatever. And we set our price or we get our hourly wage and we, we happy with that. You know what I mean? You know, the books on, on uh, Amazon Kindle for uh, $9.99, right? Nature Features. Nature's Features is on Amazon Kindle Market for $9.99. Now, if you was to catch me in person and ask for a copy after I get them printed all up, you know what I mean? It's going to be 15 bucks a copy because it costs to print those books. It costs, you know what I mean? The artwork the artwork is phenomenal. I did the same artwork for my book and the album. Um, so it's really taking my taking my artistry to a to a new level because now I have actual uh, portraits and I have books and I have my music. And I'm publishing and producing them, you know, trying to um, cut out the middleman, if you will. It's a lot more legwork. It takes a lot more effort. It's a harder grind when you're actually behind the scenes and in front of the scenes. And at the same time, trying to do what you can for, you know, who you can, you know, at the time. Trying to, you know receive and help receive because we don't really like okay we don't really do anything for each other the creator the, the our higher consciousness is doing this for each other through us you know so it's like when you extend that grace that mercy to somebody when you extend a kindness or something like that you know don't look for anything in return, it's not like, you know, you have to let things be, be platonic. You know what I mean? It, when things happen organically, platonically, when things happen just sporadically, it always tends to yield the best fruit. You know, nobody planted. I mean, <laughs> of course, the creator did, but nobody other than the creator planted the first watermelon seed or the, the grapevine, or the cherry tree, or you know what I mean, the, the orange tree. You know what I mean? Where we get all these bountiful, beautiful, delicious fruit from, right? We get it because it happened organically. We get it because it, it happened. It was just pure it happened, you know? In a lot of ways, you know, things happen organically and it's a beautiful thing like relationships, 
um, you know, understandings, to have an understanding that happens organically or platonically, it's a beautiful thing. Because there could be a misunderstanding between you and a person over something petty, something stupid, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, for, for, for there to be an understanding gained, whether that's them stepping outside of the situation and looking at it like, hold on, or whether it's you stepping outside of the situation and looking at it and saying, hold on, and you come into an understanding with yourself about the situation without the other person knowing, and then you bring in that type of energy to the table next time you meet. That's the way, that's what it's about. You know what I mean? It, everything is, is, is not about quid pro quo. And that's the problem nowadays. We're stuck in a systematic mind frame. But if you're stuck in a systematic mind frame, that's physical. You have to be more in touch with your spiritual. You. Everybody's not out to get you. Everybody, everybody's not out to bite your fucking head off. Everybody's not out to fucking hurt you. You know, you just have to be pure with yourself and be one with yourself and understand what's going on. And even when you sleep, see the slight in a situation, you know, still deal with it in a, uh, in a mannerable, in a, in a logical, reasonable, in a logical, reasonable way. Because a lot of times a person will see slight in something when there's none intended at all. You know, if I make you feel good and then you go away from the whole situation and then you think about it and something about the situation rubs you the wrong way, then you come back to me and uh, complain. You know, I'm like, whoa, well, didn't I make you feel good? Like, didn't we have a good interaction? Yeah, but I didn't like this. That's because you got in your head about the whole situation. You felt good when you walked away from me. So you must have told somebody else about the situation or got in your head about the situation. And now you feel bad about it. So now I got to get you back in that good place again. I got to make you feel good again. Hey, Sinclair, do something make me feel better. Remember that shit? <laughs> Players Club. Oh, my God, yo. That shit crazy, man. You know, <clears throat> we we have a mind to think and figure out things. You know, no matter what your situation is in life, your mind could always elevate you above that situation, beyond that situation. You know, the way we think, is more important than the circumstances that we're in. The things we think, the things we do, the things we inspire to do, the things we inspire to manifest in our life or in our children's life or, you know what I mean? Those are the things that are important. Your circumstances, the situations you go through, um, whatever, it really doesn't matter. Because all of that is temporary. But everything that you think, everything, all, all of the thoughts you have, all the things that you inspire to do, all the things that you manifest in life, those are the things that are tangible. Those are the things that's going to elevate you way past any situation, circumstance, or temporary whatever you're in. You know, to be honest with you, um, I had a great conversation with a friend the other day. We had a long fucking walk and it was just talking and things like that. And me, I'm, I got like PTSD or something. Like really, I don't trust no fucking body, but I trust, you know, her, I trust her, you know, for, you know, it's just a spirit. It's a spiritual thing. You know, me thinking in the physical I wouldn't trust no fucking body, right? Me thinking in the physical, right, is like, don't trust nobody. Just stay in your fucking zone, you know, 
But spiritually, I know. You know, with my higher conscious, I know. And I, I get it. We need each other. We need people. We need to interact with each other. You know, they say birds of a feather flock together and you need like-minded people. You also need people like, okay, like-spirited people, but eh, semi-like-minded. This way you can ping pong off each other and, and develop new understandings. This beautiful thing, man. You know, we got to realize that the the world is in a place where it, it trans it, is a new age right now. Right. We moved into the age of Aquarius. Right. That's the age of people actually getting together and things of that things of that nature. Right. Introverts becoming extroverts or omniverts or whatever you want to call it, or however you want to put it. Right. But either way, that's the way it's going. And. We come from tribes, you know, we come from tribes. And what I realize is we have to find our tribe, you know, and sometimes just us doing what we do as individuals help our tribe find us. So it's a deep, okay, I hear physically, nothing's attaching us to each other. But if we close our eyes and we really, you know, concentrate and, and meditate, it's like you can almost feel the connection to one another. You can almost sense it. If you think about someone, you can almost have a conversation with them. You know, you can almost hear their voice. You can almost see their face. If you can have thoughts that can allow you to hear a voice or see faces or things of this nature, that means there's something greater inside that's going on. There's something that's that's more powerful in you that's going on. There's something above you that's going on. There's something that's exterior, external. That's feeding this to you. know, whether it's just a thought of somebody doing something and you get an image in your mind of somebody doing or performing an act or something like that. It's like, and then you find out it probably actually happened. And then you're like, whoa, what the fuck? That shit actually happened? Did you manifest that? Or did it actually happen? Was that you seeing from their side, like, whoa, okay, this person is foul. Or this person is cool as shit. Or this person, oh, I gotta figure this person out. Or maybe I just, not figured them out, but I can't really even say a person is foul. This person is cool as shit. You know, see, I gotta, because that's still judgmental. You can observe. See, let me shut the fuck up. So that's not being judgmental. See, now, see, this is the struggle that I go with, with myself. See, it's a battle between the things we think and the things we, you know, sometimes I catch myself thinking one way and then I'd be like, hold on, just because I realize or recognize that something is foul or somebody is doing something to foul. And I'm saying, oh, that's some foul shit. No, that's just being observant. I'm not judging, just being observant. It's foul shit. But at the same time, a lot of niggas do foul shit for good reasons. Or or or, or like, like, okay. Revenge or some shit like that. Or, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, or I don't know. You know, like, that should be weird as shit. Even that ain't a good thing, because two wrongs don't make a right. That's the crazy part about that. This whole, this whole thing is realizing that everything is intermingled. Everything is culminated. Everything that you say and do and put out here in the universe has a cause and effect either way. Whether it's by your doing and biddings or somebody else's doing and biddings. But either way, shit happens. Shit happens in life. Things are going on in life. 
You know what I mean? And that's that's what it is. In this life, in this physical world, and in the spiritual world, the things you do and manifest here might have an effect on things that's going on elsewhere. That's the duality of it. You know, if you believe in multiverses and, you know, worlds within worlds or other worlds outside of worlds, you know, that create multiverses and, you know, wormholes that could take you somewhere else, you know, is is sheer coincidence that we meet each other and that we live life and that we bump into each other here. But remember, your energy is never, energy is never destroyed. It's merely transferred from one place to another, right? So if it's transferred from one place to another, what's to say that we won't bump into each other in another lifetime, in another place, in a different atmosphere? What's to say we're not bumping into each other right now in a different place, in a different lifetime, in another atmosphere. I may know you now here, and I may be the loving, most loving person in the world with a heart of gold here, right now, right? But somewhere else, right? Somewhere else, I can be the most ruthless motherfucker, you know, to ever, ever set foot on a planet, you know, or to ever live a life, you know? That's the duality of a thing. You could be here, one thing here, and elsewhere, you could be a fucking monster. You know what I mean? You know, you could be a duality. You could be good and evil, rich and poor. I'm rich and poor, and I'm loving it. The only reason I'm loving it is because I'm building something and I'm meeting people and I'm going through situations in life that allow me to have this thought process and to think this way, right? And to have this spiritual connection with something higher, with a higher consciousness and to, and to try to understand the sub, the subconsciousness, right? Of the, of the man, of the mind, right? Cause you have a higher consciousness and you have a subconsciousness. So I'm grateful, right, to be rich and poor because I'm rich in knowledge. I'm rich in accomplishments. I'm rich in the things that I'm achieving, right? I'm rich in my now. I'm rich in right now because I have when a lot of people don't have, right? But I'm not rich like I'm on TV and famous. I got billions of dollars or even fucking millions of dollars. Shit, thousands. Of dollars. Look, <laughs> you know what I mean? Ain't nobody got it like that, but we trying to get it like that. And that's what counts. Because if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. And the things that you create makes dollars. So it got to make sense. You know what I mean? Uh, just building things that no man, no woman could take away from me or my kids or anything that I'm leaving behind, you know what I mean? Because it seems like that's what it's designed to do, you know? It's designed to try to, you know, have you die broke, cold, and alone, you know? The whole thing is a lot of times when you don't have, when, when you're not setting a bar or, you know, or, or achieving what you feel as if you have to achieve. But you know what? Even in that, we can't say that. Because this life path, you know, sometimes we feel like, what was me? What led me here? Why am I going through this? What is this fucking life? You know, it's like, we get put in situations and get, get put in places in life because maybe we're not doing what we were intended to do with this life. You know what I mean? And yeah, we have a level of free will. But there is a such thing of, it's called divine intervention. 
That's intervention from the spiritual realm. You don't want to get spookatized with it. You don't want to be too spooky with it. That's just the intervention from the spiritual realm, right? Intervention from the spiritual realm can make this to, can make this physical realm be like you. You're like yo, what the fuck is going on? Like yo, how is all this shit happening right now? Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, huh? At that point. If you're looking at everything from a physical point of view, if you're looking through e e at everything with your dick tip lenses on, with your dick tip goggles on, you know, and I'm, I say that because, I mean, you're just looking at everything in the physical. Oh, shit, fuck up here. It's fucked up here. It's, this is going on. This is going on. I'm, a, You know what I mean? It's like you'll wind up hurting yourself or somebody else, you know, somebody you love, somebody you care about. You're going to wind up hurting yourself or somebody else. But when you look at, you know, spiritual intervention from a spiritual point of view or, or you, you, you're more, you know, gravitating to a uh, spiritual realm, it's like you can see things clearer. It, it allows you to look at the glass as half full and not half empty because you got to realize that, OK, maybe that just isn't where I was meant to be in life. Maybe that's just maybe that wasn't for me. Maybe I was meant to be over here. Maybe I was meant to learn something over here and then go back there. Or maybe I was going to do this. Just go with the flow either way. Because as long as you maintain who you are and be who you are and be true to you and do the things that you got to do, shit, ain't nothing to it but to do it. You being true, the universe will be true to you. The creator will be true. That higher consciousness will be true to you. That you, you'll, you'll, you'll elevate your way of living, your family's way of living. You'll elevate the way you think. You'll elevate, you know, a lot of things. Because a lot of times, you know, when things are crashing, when things are going bad, and you're gravitating towards the physical more, man, that shit seemed bleak. Everything seemed bleak. Rainy days are the worst, you know what I mean? Because you like, what the fuck? But when you're in the spiritual, it's like, you're good. When you're in that higher consciousness, let me, I'm going to say higher consciousness. When you're in that higher consciousness, you're good. You can make, you already know that you have a journey, right? You're on a journey. And this journey, you're going to come through, you're going to have to go through bushes, you're going to have to go under you know, barriers, you're going to have to climb over things, you're going to have to go around things, you're going to have to figure things out. But it's your journey, and you have to fulfill that journey. You have to live your journey completely out until the Creator says, hey, it's time. You know, I'm going I'm to put out this, because I'm tired of the myth you know, they say, oh, well, it must have been a time when somebody get murdered or killed or something like that. Because I'm going to tell you like this. That's some sucker shit. Because the creator doesn't put people here to kill people because it's their time. The creator didn't put, or higher consciousness didn't put cars here and things like that for people to get hit by cars, okay? He didn't, you know... The creator didn't do that. You know, man created those things. So if a man takes you away from your journey and, you know, and it's something like that or, you know, abort your mission or something like that, he got to deal with that on his own. So that's why, you know, when you, when you, that's, that's your subconscious. When you kill somebody or take a life, that has to play in your subconscious. You are haunted by those people that you've hurt, that you did wrong and things of that nature, right? Just like even if you haven't done somebody wrong, they can haunt you in your subconscious because they might feel like you did something wrong to them for whatever fucking reason. But the only way to raise above that is either be conscious and try not to let your subconscious bother you, which... It's hard to fucking do. Good luck with that one. Or just being a higher conscious. 
see if you if if you twist if you twist the axis right, put the axis on the side and stop calling it higher conscious and subconscious right, or you just call it left and right right. When you're left, you have good. On your right, you have evil, right? And that's crazy because you would think on your right, you have good, and on your left, you have evil, right? But no, on your left, you have good, and on your right, you have evil, right? Now, the thing is, which are you going to gravitate to? Are you going to lean towards evil to the right, or are you going to lean towards the left, good? That's purely up to you. It's just that simple. You can either live in the physical and, 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 you know, keep being abused by everyday life, by everyday circumstances, by everyday things, period. You know what I mean? It's like people get so caught up into, you know, their jobs, work, their circumstances, something that's getting on their nerves, something that's bothering them, you know, somebody that rubs them the wrong fucking way or something like that, that they forget that, you know, there's more to life than what they're doing. You know, maybe they're experiencing these things because they're not where they're supposed to be. Maybe they're not. <sighs> maybe they're not doing what they're supposed to do, you know? Or maybe they're just, you know, going through their thing. Because we're all on this journey together. And everybody growth and learning is different. You would expect older people to have a better understanding of that. But a lot of them don't. And I'm realizing that. A lot of our older older cats, the, the men, you know what I mean? And, and the women too. A lot of them, they don't be having it, man. They get caught in that physical realm. A lot of the younger cats, too. They get caught in that physical realm. That me, me, me shit. You know. <laughs> I don't even want to expound upon it, but, you know, just. People be doing some sucker shit, man. I'm going to just say that. People do a lot of sucker shit. But when you're in the spiritual and you really look above that, you know what I mean? You can really see past all that shit. You know what I mean? You can see past all the sucker shit niggas do or whatever because you know your purpose. You know why you're there. You know what you're doing. You know what you got. You know what I mean? You got focus. You you focused on what you're doing, you know? Yeah, it should be like, yeah, it should be looking, you know, real, you know, but it's like, damn, at the same time, you know, people people will only look out for you as much as you look out for them. But then you got people that even when you look out for them, as much as you look out for them, they'll still slight you in the long run. That's why, I, that's, that's my PTSD right there. Because people that I look out for always slight me in the long run. Loved ones, friends, lend me your ears. <laughs> like, seriously, that should be crazy, man. But you got to understand that they they haven't spiritually matured to not do those type of things to people. And that's the scary part about it, because you never know who you're around, who who is spiritually mature enough to not do these type of things to people. You know what I mean? Some people will, will get the spirit of intoxication in them and they say and do stupid shit or just, you know what I mean, be on some sucker shit with you. You know what I mean? If, if any time you take something and it takes you your character away from who you are, like the essence of who you are, you don't need to be doing it, you know? When I get high, it put me deeper into who I am. You know, so when a person get intoxicated and they get inebriated and they act a certain way towards me and things of that nature, I understand that 
this is who they truly are. Because sometimes it, it shows who a person truly is. You can fake and flaunch about who you are all you want. You can pretend about who you are all you want. But at the end of the day, you know, when somebody observes you, they always going to, the true you is always going to show. The true you is always going to show. For show. <laughs> you know? But yeah, uh, we'll be right back after word from these sponsors. Thank y'all. Hey, real quick, guys. This is Mr. Pagan here. Just want to let y'all know that I have books available on Amazon, Kindle, bookstores, and on your phones. I got two great titles available and a third one coming soon. My philosophy is, if you got a smartphone or a smart device, you already got my book in your hands. It's free for download if you got Kindle Unlimited. And it's $5 otherwise. For uh, One Leap of Faith, it's 5 bucks, And for my book, Morals and Values, it's five twenty-five. Both of them are packed with insightful information on morals and values. And One Leap of Faith is to push you to, to, to get on your grind for your goals. You know what I mean? Two powerful books. I got a thriller coming up called Moonlit Marshes with a uh, character, the protagonist is Marshall Cuts, and he's trying to uh, get his way, uh, he's trying to find his way out of Louisiana without getting himself uh, hurt or killed or something. It's a great suspenseful book. Please check it out. It's going to be on Amazon Kindle Store. Remember, both these books are available for free. One Leap of Faith and Morals and Value. You got Kindle Unlimited. They're available for free. And also, don't forget to check out my game stream on YouTube, Gaming Vaping Guns. And on Twitch, I'm GVG215. All right? And also, my music streams on all streaming platforms. Whether you got Apple, is there. Whether you got Tidal, guess what? Is there. Listen on Spotify. Yeah, I'm on Spotify. This podcast is actually on Spotify. Also, the music. So, yeah, we, we well-rounded. Everything that I'm doing is complimenting each other. So, please, support the movement. Support my brand. Support the positive energy that I'm putting out there. And you guys, be blessed. May peace be with you.